Good day everyone, my name is Graphics. Today we'll be solving this exercise on trusses. Now look at this frame structure. We have a frame structure that has point A, B, C, D and E. We also call it joint. Now we are told to calculate each forces associated with each member. Like we want to know the force in member A, B. We want to know the force in member B, C. We want to know the force in member C, D member D E and also member D E B E. Now before then we need to know the reaction of this support. Before we calculate the forces we need to know the reaction. So the first step in solving this question is to calculate for each of the reaction. And how we're going to know the reaction is by converting this support into a reaction in our free body diagram. So the first step is that what? You draw your word, your free body diagram. That is the first step. Now, our free body diagram is a diagram that shows all the external force that is acting on the system. So, this is how our free body diagram will look like. Now, this is the free body diagram of this frame structure here. At point A, we are having a hinge support or a pin support, which is always having two reactions. It's acting towards the x axis and towards the y axis. And at point E or joint E, we have a roller support, which is having just one reaction. Now, at this point also, we have an inclined force of 2 kN at an angle of 6 degree. We are going to what? Resolute it. We are resoluting it into a horizontal component and a vertical component. If you watch my previous video, you get to understand more about this concept. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the first step you do. You are going to draw it in your free body diagram. Now the next thing you do, you need to calculate for what? The reaction. You need to know what ROEX is. You need to know what ROAS is. And you need to know what ROAY is. Don't forget, your ROS is the reaction at point A along X axis. ROAY is the reaction at point A along Y axis. ROES is the reaction at point E along X axis. So the next thing we need to do is what? Calculate for the reaction. And the way you can calculate for the reaction is to use your condition for equilibrium and there are three of them we have summation of what ef of summation of f of x summation of f of y and summation of moment about a point right equals to what equals to zero so in some in some textbooks or some departments they will tell you summation of what h equals to zero summation of what v equals to zero and summation of moment about a point equals to what zero. So let's start with what? The first guy. The first one is summation of what? EF of X. That's the first one. Equals to zero. And you say consider consider all forward force to be positive and backward force to be negative. Now, if you look at this frame here, we have a force that is forward. This is one, two, three. There are three of them. And they are all facing the right hand side. And we we'll say any force facing the right hand side is what? It's positive. So we're having um, RU AX, right? RU AX plus RU EX plus 2 cos 60 equals to what zero so these are the three horizontal components we have here now we know my two cos 60 is one so i'll be having my roax plus roex plus one equals to what zero now if my one comes to this side it becomes a negative so i'll be having the roax plus roex equals to what minus one so you put your unit kilonewton so this is equation what? Equation 1. Right? Now the next thing you do is the second condition for equilibrium. Saying all vertical component is equal to what? Zero. So that means all upward force is equal to what? All downward force. So let's see how that goes. Now let's start. We have a um, summation of what? F of Y is equal to what? Zero. So you write consider consider upward force to be positive 
and downward force to be what negative so now the upward force here we have how many we just have um, arrow a y and two sine 60 but arrow a y is facing upward so i'll just write my arrow a y right so two sine 60 is facing downward so i'll put minus what two sine 60 are we good so equals to what zero now two sine 60 is 1.732 so my arrow a y my arrow a y minus 1.732 is equals to what zero so if i take this to the other side it will give me positive so my arrow a y will give me 1.732 kilo newton this is my arrow a y that i've got in there right so the next thing you do again is to calculate for moment so we we'll take moment about a point now the point we should take moment should be point a because i like taking moment about my hinge supports now this is point a so i'll take moment about point a which is what the hinge support is always good because at the hinge support we have two unknown by the time you take moment about this point it means this two unknown becomes zero so you'll be able to have time to focus on the other forces so we'll go there I'll take moment about point A here. About point A here equals to what? Zero. I will like say consider the clockwise moment to be positive and the anticlockwise moment to be what? Negative. So now look at how it goes. If I take moment about point A, we know very well that to save our time now if you look at this from this point here from the diagram to this point here given as what 750 and from this point here to this point is another word 750 right then from here to here also is another word 750 now one thing you need to know is that there's no unit associated with it but you should know it is a millimeter so you have to convert it to what to meter by dividing by 1000 so if i divide 750 by 1000 i'll be having what 0 0.75 I divide 750 by 1000 i'll having 0 0.75 right and 0 0.75 plus 0 0.75 will give me what 1.5 so distance from this point here to this point here is 1.5 distance from this point here to this point here is what 0 0.75 when you convert right so i'll be taking this off Take this off to not confuse us and i'll take this off and i'll take this off so we're using 0 0.75 a meter as from now on now at this point here we're taking moment at point what at point a here right so when you take moment at point a everything at that point will become zero so i will now measure so what is moment moment is the force times what perpendicular distance so if i take moment about this point a here it means everything will come what zero so it's any force that is perpendicular to this line because it says is a force from the point of action to the line of action of the force so this is our line of action here right and this is also our line of action so anything we are doing will be going towards this direction and we are doing will be going towards the direction that we are taking moment because moment is at this point so whatever I'll do, we're going towards this direction. I will together. Now, if I take moment about here, this guy will be coming this direction. Because we'll be going towards where I'm taking moment. So it will be, and we say this is clockwise, because it's going in a clockwise direction like this. If I'm going like the clockwise direction, it will be 2 sine 60 times the distance of where I'm taking moment from. From here to here. We say it is what? 1.5 right so 2 sine 60 times what 1.5 that is the first thing we are going to do so i'm going to write um, 2 sine 60 2 sine 60 times what 1.5 that is the first thing then plus the next one now if you look at this also if i take moment at this point too this point will be going towards this direction to that point that I'm having taking moment because moment is more like a turning effect. 
Now it's coming towards this point and it's going anti clockwise. Look at the direction I'm going like this backward. So it's this will now become negative because we say any force that is going anti clockwise is negative. It's, and this force here you see it is perpendicular to this line of action here. It will be minus RE X times so it will be minus RE S times distance from here to here. And distance from here to here is also 750, but if you we've converted to what million to meter we are using 0 0.75 so minus minus res times 0 0.75 will be the next thing we do now minus rex multiplied by 0 0.75 equals to what zero so 2 sine 60 times 1.5 will give me 2.598 plus no minus times plus will give you minus 0 0.75 times RS will give you 0 0.75 ROEX equals to what? 0. So if I take all this value to the left side, it become positive. So I'll be having um, 2.598 equals to what 0 0.75 ROEX now I will divide both sides by 0 0.75 so that ROEX will stay alone so I'll be having 2.598 all over 0 0.75 equals to what ROEX so my RO so my ROEX my ROEX will be giving me 3.464 please your unit kilo unit kilo newton so that is our first reaction that we're having here this is what we're having here now the next thing is when we are having our equation here we said ROEX ROAS plus ROX is equal to minus one so we need to put ROEX that we have here in equation one above so we are going to put we say put Put um, ROEX, put ROEX in equation 1 above. So, what is equation 1? Equation 1 is ROEX plus ROEX is equals to minus 1. So, my ROEX minus or plus bracket ROEX is what? ROEX is 3.464 equals to what? Minus 1. So if I take this to the other side, my ROEX is equals to minus 1 minus 3.464. And my ROEX will give me minus 4.464 kN. This is my ROEX. Now we have gotten ROEX. We've gotten ROAX and we have gotten ROAY. So the next thing we we'll do, we need to now. Read. So we have this force here, ROEX, which is equal to 3.464 kilonewton, and it is positive, so it's facing right. Now the next one is um, ROAX. The ROAX given here. ROAX is given to be 4.464 but it is negative so I'm going to make it point the other way around now if you watch something very well the actual diagram we have here my ROAX is pointing forward but when I now solved my ROAX I now discovered that what the ROS is negative so I have to change the sign to face backward so my ROAY will be giving me 1.732 kilonewton also and that is what I'm having so this is successfully calculated for each of the reaction now the next step is that what we need to know each force that is associated to what to each member to know each force associated to each member that is what we are going to do now so we, there are three ways at which you can know the forces associated, associated to each member one of those way is called joint analysis, another way is called section analysis, and the third way is called what? Graphical analysis. So, but at this particular lecture now, we're using joint analysis. 
so I'll, I'm going to write that using joint analysis so that is what we are using so how are we going to know the joint to start from we have five joints here joint A joint B joint C joint D and joint E what we we'll do is we are going to start with a joint that has nothing more than two unknown like if you look at this joint here now at this point we have something like this we have a force coming up here we have another force coming up here so I'm going to call this force my um, my F A B I'll call here also my F A B if I have the same thing here too this is coming this direction and this is coming this direction I'm going to call this my F E A and my F A E they are the same thing if I come to this point also I also have the same thing this is what we'll be having so at this joint A here we have a force F A B and we have a force F A E so we only have two unknown here we don't know what the force along A B is I don't know what the force along A E is so I can start using my joint A if you come to joint C also I don't know the force along CB I don't know the force along CD so it's also two unknown I have here I can use I can start from A or I can start from C but if you come to B I don't know this FBC FBD FBE and FAB they are more than two unknown we have one two three four there are four unknown here I can't do this I can't use this if I come to join D I have three unknown I cannot use this if I come to joint E I have three unknown also so I cannot use any joint aside from joint A or joint C that's where I can start with so I will not start I will say um, joint A we're starting with what joint A and I'm going to draw what I have there so at joint A and I'm having this at joint A I'm having this I'm going to draw it out So at joint A here, yeah, I have this force coming out like this, and that is what FAB. I have this one too here, and that is ROAY, which is equals to 1.732 kilonewton. I have this going out here, which is uh, ROAX, which is equals to 4.464. And I have FAE coming down. This is FAE, right? So that's what we have in joint A. So this is our joint A here. So we just bring out that joint A, you bring it out. Now the next thing you do is you start using the condition for equilibrium to what? To calculate each member. I mean each member there. So let's see. So we we'll use the first one, summation of what? E F of X, summation of F of X equals to what? zero and you are going to consider you consider um forward force to be positive backward force to be what negative now how many horizontal force do we have here we have two this and this right so this facing forward which is what f a b it is positive then this facing backward is negative minus what r o a x right equals to what zero so if I have to put in my parameters, my FAB minus ROAX is what? 4.464 equals to what? Zero. So my FAB will give me 4.464 kilonewton. That is the first force here that we're having. So the next thing I'll do is to use the other condition for equilibrium which is the word summation of f of y is equal to what zero and i'm going to write consider um upward force positive and downward force to be what negative so if i do that i have a many force here one two so the first one is arrow a y arrow a y facing upward minus f a e 
facing downward equals to zero because that's the only two force we have there so my ROAY is 1.732 is minus my FAE equals to zero so if I take this to this side my FAE my FAE FAE will be equal to what 1.732 kilonewton this is my FAE here so we've gotten those two forces now we are going to redraw to know if our force is normal or is abnormal so let's see so if you redraw at this point let me just redraw I have this we know arrow A Y is positive facing up F A B is what positive this direction F A B right F A B is facing this direction then the next one is um, F A E is positive but at this point here it is negative so I'm going to correct it by making it positive so my F A E will be facing upward FAE then my arrow AX remain the way it is my arrow AX remain there now if you look at now I've changed it initially it was facing down but when I saw that I realized that what it is actually an upward force so what are we going to do we need to know which of this force is a tie and which of this force is a what struct now there's something we'll call a comp a, there's something we'll call tension when you say tension you mean an outward force two forces two axial force as in two force facing opposite direction outward now when you send a force that is going outward you call that force a tie right but when you talk about a strut a strut is a force in compression and i do call them inward force so any force you see that is going inward that force is said to be what a strut or you call it a comp now look at this force here now my FAB is going outward is leaving this point here is going outward so it's a tie so FAB is called what is a tie and my FAE is also going inward also yes yeah, going so it's called what a strut so my FAB is called a strut so it's called a strut so FAE is a strut why FAB is a tie so move to our next joint so we would like to go to so the next joint will be taking let's take uh let's look at it let's take joint c joint c because we just have only two unknown in joint c we don't know fcb and fcd so i'll go to the next joint which is what joint c so let's go to joint c so joint we're taking joint c if i take joint c i'll be having something like this I'll be having this. I have a force coming this direction, and I will have another force coming this direction, and I'll have another force going this direction, and I will have another one coming here. So this will be one kilonewton. This will be one point seven three two, and uh, this will be FCB. And this will be F C D. Right? Now this angle here will be what? Angle 45. Why is it 45? If you look at this diagram here, this is 750. This is 750. So it's a square. Square all the sides are equal. So if I take the diagonal of the square, it means that what the angle here will be what 45. Just like the angle here is what 45. Because this from like this to this point is 90. So half of 90 is 45. So that is why I'm having this guy to be what? 45 degree. So at this point here, at this point here, the angle here is what? 45. Right? And also the angle here too is what? 45. So let's search forward. Now, let's proceed. This is our joint C. Of the brought out the joint C. Look at it. The joint C, we brought it out here. So as you can see, we're having all this. So the first thing you do is your summation of what? EF of X equals to what? Zero. That is the first thing you do. So you consider, consider forward force is positive, backward force is negative. 
right so we have this force going backward that is minus fcb is going forward plus one right now one thing you need to understand is that what this is inclined this angle here is inclined so at this point here i'll be having fcd cos 45 and at this point here i'll be having fcd sin 45 if you watch my previous video you get to understand so i'm going to put since this is going backward this way so it will be minus fcd cos 45 so these are all the horizontal components that we have here please try and watch my other videos so equals to zero now if i rewrite this i'll be having negative fcb negative fcd cos 45 is equals to negative one so i'll time it my equation one so the next thing i'll do is used for summation of what f of y equals to what zero and i'm going to write consider consider upward force to be positive downward force to be what negative so if you look at it at this point here i have this force here facing downward that will give me minus seven minus one point seven three two this is also inclined but the vertical force facing downward here is what minus fcd sine 45 right so what else again that's what we're having to so equals to what zero now if i take this to the other side i'll be having minus fcd sine 45 is equals to what 1.732 so if I divide both sides by sine 45, I'll be having minus FCD is equals to 1.732 all over what? Sine 45, which will give me what? What will it give me? So we'll be having 2.449 kilonewton. But I have a negative here, so it will give me um to give me mm -hmm, it's going to give me fcd is equals to negative 2.449 kilonewton that'll be my fcd now i'm going to put fcd in equation one here to get my fcb so so you that right that uh put or substitute FCD in equation one. So this is my equation one here, which is a minus FCD minus this FCB minus FCD cos forty five is equal to minus one. So if I put in my FCD, which is 2.449, we're having negative FCB minus, into bracket, minus 2.449 cos 45 equals to minus 1. So minus FCB, minus times minus is what? Plus, so 2.449 cos 45, that will give me... 2.49 cos 45 that will give me 0 0.2.449 cos 45 that will give me 1.732 1.732 is equal to minus 1 so if I take this to the other side minus FCB will give me minus 1 minus 1.732 so minus FCB will give me minus 2.732 kilonewton so it's now have a minus and have a minus here minus we equate each other so my fcb will give me 2.732 kilonewton that is my fcb so we can check if it is a tie or a struct so checking if it's a tie or a struct we will redraw 
we are going to what? We will withdraw. And this will be coming this direction. FCB, this is one kilonewton here. This is one kilonewton here. This is uh, 1.732 here. This is um, FCD. FCD here is negative here. And FCD here is negative, so it keeps its direction. Then we have FCB coming in direction too. So FCB here is what? Negative, but here it is what? Positive. So I'm going to change the direction of this to go inward. So my FCB here will be facing inward, unlike here that is facing outward. So automatically, FCB going inward is a struct. Is a struct. Right? Mm -hmm. And FCD is still remaining where it is, which is outward, is also what? A tie. So my FCD is a tie. So we'll move further to the next joint. The next joint that I'm going to go to will be what? Joint E. But initially I said joint E has three unknown, which is FEA, FCD, and F, um, FEB. But now, if you, look, if you recall, from our previous work that we've solved, we discovered that we've gotten what? FCB. We know what FCB is now, and we know what FEA is. FEA the same thing as saying FAE so we know what FAE is are we good? so that means if you know what FAE is so you are only left with what? F FED and FCB so we have those only two unknown so let's proceed so we'll be taking joint E now this is uh, joint E and this is joint here joint E so we have FED, which is our FED, we have FEB, which is our FEB, at an angle of what 45, which I've told you how I got that earlier on because this is a square. The angle of the square will give you is at an angle of 45 degree, and we have FEA, which is facing up. You notice this is we've already gotten FEA before. Our FEA, which is this, this is our FEA here, but FEA. Is equals to what? F E E. They are all the both of them are equal. So when you see F A E or F E A, you know it is what? 1.732. So let's start. So you do the same thing. Summation of what? F of X is equals to what? Zero. Consider consider forward force positive and the backward force will be what? Negative. Now we have a forward force, so which is what? REX. What is REX? REX is what? 3.464. So I'm having 3.464. Then we have FED plus FED. And we have what? This guy is inclined. So we're having an inclined force here, which will be FEB cos 45. So here will be plus FED. FEB cos 45. So there's no horizontal force again, so equal to what? Zero. So if I'm to rewrite this, I'll have my FED plus FEB cos 45 is equal to this 3.6464 comes to the other side to give you minus 3.464. So I'll target equation 1. So the next thing I'll do. I'll go for summation of f of y equals to what zero. And I'm going to write consider upward force to be what positive and downward force to be what negative. Right? So from here I have an upward force here which is what FEA. And I said earlier that my FEA is in as what FAE and that is 1.732. So I'll put it here that this is equal to 1.732 plus FEA is equal to what? FAE. So I have 1.732, right? Then I have this guy is inclined, so I'm going to resolve it. This will be FEB sine 45. So it will give me plus FEB 
sine 45 equals to what zero so if i write this it should give me feb sine 45 is equals to minus 1.732 so so my feb will now be equals to minus 1.732 over sine 45 so my feb will be equals to 2.449 so there's negative there so it will be minus so kilonewton so this is my feb so i'm going to put so i'm going to put um, feb in equation one so put feb in equation one to substitute substitute feb in equation one above so that will now give us a f e d plus f e b cos 45 is equal to minus 3.464 so we have f e b FED plus bracket minus 2.449 cos 45 is equals to minus 3.464 so 2.449 cos 45 this will give me minus times min plus will give minus we have 1.732 because 2.49 cos 45 will give you 1.732 equals to minus 3.464 so FED will give me minus 3.464 plus 1.732 when you take this to the other side so you'll be having FED is equals to minus 1.732 so this is my FED here. So we've got in the FED. Now we want to know if it's a tie or a struct. Now if you look at this diagram initially, FED is going outward. But here FED is now negative. So when you are drawing it, it's going what? Inward. So let me just draw that to be on the silver point uh, on the silver side. If you look at this, initially my FED is positive facing forward. When I now solved, I realized that what FED is negative. So I change the direction of my arrow to f face the back direction, which is negative, right? So now this is inward. So FED is going inward, and that is a struct. So FED is a struct or a comp. This is a struct, right? Then FEB also, initially it was going positive, right? It's going positive direction, but here it's negative. So I change the direction to go back inward. So my FEB will be what? A struct also. So FEB is also a struct, right? So that is for joint E. So we'll go to the next joint, which will be joint... Um, D. So the next joint to be considering will be what? Joint D. Joint D. Now in joint D, which is this joint here, we've already gotten FED, and I told you FED since I've seen FDE also, and we have just how many unknown. We also know what FDE is, right? We know what F. Um, FCD is here or FDC is FDC here. So we just only we are looking for what FBD. So I'm going to draw that joint and I have something like this. So this is what we're having. So considering that joint, we're having all this. So we start by saying the um, summation of E summation of f of x is equal to zero. So we want to consider consider forward force to be positive and backward force to be what? negative now 
I have this horizontal force which is minus FDE which is minus FDE and FDE that we calculated for here is um, is minus 1.732 so if I'm writing this I'm going to write minus 1.732 because that is my word FDE so another one again is inclined this is inclined so this will be F uh, FDC cos 45 so I'll be writing plus FDC cos 45 so that's the only horizontal component I have it equals to what? 0 so from here my FDC cos 45 is equals to 1.732 so FDC will now give me 1.732 all over what? Cos 45, so which will be giving me this will give me 2.449 kilonewton, right? That's my FDC. Then the next one is a summation of EF of Y, summation of F of Y equals to zero. Consider upward force to be positive and downward force to be what? Negative. So I'm having this guy which is facing all positive. That is FDB. FDB. And I have this guy also if I incline, if I resolute it, we'll be having FDB sine 45. So FDB plus FDB sine 45 is equals to what? Zero. So my FDB, sorry, this is FDC. So my FDB, sorry, my FDB will be giving me minus FDC sine 45. So FDC will go here is 2.049. So FDB, let me write it here. FDB will now be equals to um, 2.049 minus 2.449 sine 45 so FDB will give me what 2.049 sine 45 is what that will be 1.732 1.732 kilonewton negative here that is my FDB so we've got in FDB. Now here FDB is telling me negative, but my FDB here is telling me positive, right? So it's coming to change direction, something like this. So it will be coming inward, backward, and that will be what? A struct because it's going inward. So it will be a struct, it's going inward. Okay. Now we have um, FDC which is 2.449. So FDC is 2.49 is positive, so to, it keeps its direction. So that is its type. So this keeps its direction. FDC and that will be a tie. This is a tie. Then what else again? This is going outward. And that is all. This is FDB and this is FDE. So that will be the last joint we will be solving because when you have five joints, you solve four joints. If you have six joints, you solve five joints. Are we good? So thank you very much for watching. Even before you are done, before you even before we go, at A B, the members that we have here, we have these are the six members that we have. So the force at member A B is four point four six four. The force at member A E is uh, one point seven three two. The force at member CD is 2.449, 2.449, but if you look over, I have a negative here, 2.449 is a negative, but I won't write the negative there, I'll just write the 2.449 here, but if I put a tie here, it's telling me what I need to know, at AB, I'm also having a tie here, at AE, I'm having a strut, so at um, at um, 
a b at a b or e b i'm having 2.449 also 2.449 and that e b is given to be a struct a struct at d e i'm having um, 1.732 1.732 and also a struct then at b c d e is a struct so at b c we'll be having um at b c we'll be having we'll be having 2.732 and that will be a struct so what else again and that is all so i have struct 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 so this is how you table it when you are done to show the difference in the first so thank you for watching